What is poppin' y'all? Welcome back to another YouTube video, a really long one this time, but we are taking a look at the Spider-Verse concept art made by one artist, and I think it's really important to look at concept art, and it's really cool to look at concept art, because we can see uh, all the creative decisions that were made, we can see all the sort of ideas that came to play, and what could have been uh, in the Spider-Verse world. But here is Miguel O'Hara's design. He has the most concept art made by um, this artist here, and his outfit does look really cool in black. I like the choices here. Um, this is the final design with what they went with, just some dynamic poses for him. And um, I do like it. The black looks really sick, but I'm glad they went with the blue because it fits more his sort of style. But the black does like make him look more like Miles' suit, and it is like really cool. Um, there was an option for a white suit, which I was quite interested in, and his eyes, they had a lot of different choices for his eyes. I do like three, and I do believe that's the one they went with. However, four does look quite cool as well. Same with here, with like the different choices to what to design his back. There's a lot of detail in, within these characters that they had to sort of choose and pick out and like decide what they wanted, and I think that's really cool and really important to look at. I do believe this is like a final design they went with here. Um, I like his cape, but I also don't at the same time. His cape can sort of come and go. And it's sort of, I don't know, his cape isn't that important to the character. Um, but there was an option for a light blue at the bottom left there. Um, I'm not sure how I'd feel about a light blue. I think his blue is... What they went with for Miguel was sort of perfect. I do like his grumpy little slouch in the chair there. Um, I think that's quite funny, uh, and it's nice to see that they kept the comedy going throughout. Um, but a lot of artists were overworked on this film, and they did lose a lot of artists uh, due to them quitting, um, or just straight up giving up and leaving the project. Uh, but for all you Miguel Sims, there is so much Miguel in stuff here that you can just take a quick look at as I keep talking. Um, I know a lot of you are Miguel Sims. This one, I really like this costume design. I do believe this is what the Funko Pop is based out of because uh, they give out the concept art to Lego, Funko, uh, Hasbro, so then they can make toys and figures based on these concept arts. So I do believe that's the one that Funko got because I don't think his costume actually looked that bright with the sort of um, three, the sort of computer design on it, like the digital circuit board circuitry going. We do have some alternate designs for Miguel's suit going off, and I like this one the most. This one looks the coolest with his suit going, like, away. Uh, but there is a glitch one here, which I think would have been too much like the glitching from the first film and wouldn't have really worked, and it would have been like he was glitching out of reality. So I'm glad that they didn't go with this one. Um, this one looks quite cool. It's like a like an Iron Man type one with, like, photons. I don't know why. No, it's like... F for pris prismatic, there we go. Um, I don't know where I got photons from. I would do like to apologize. And then this one's more techy and going circuit trick board, circuit trick board. Uh, he did also have a design for a white suit, which I'm quite impressed by. It looks really cool, and it does look like it's being built. And I am interested, like, with the way it's being built. It just looks so sort of cool. There's a lot of tubes, and it looks like a Iron Man thing from, like, Iron Man 1 or the Avengers movie, where he stands out on top of the Avengers Tower, and it sort of builds itself around him. Uh, it looks really cool and really detailed. Um, the white suit is just... I don't know. I don't think it's, like, as iconic uh, as some of the other suits that are in the Spider-Man world, but the 2999 one in white is really cool. Some of the little cons like the little notes put next to them are really cool uh, for some of the characters, and I'll think mention those again later. Gwen also has a couple of da designs, and it does look like uh, the in-universe sort of choices for these character changes was that she took inspiration from other Spider-Man suits. Um, if you look down at the bottom, they're all made by Chris. Um, so big shout out to him. He has an Instagram account, and he posts all these on there. Um, and all this concept art is owned by him. It's all his art. Uh, that went into designing these characters into the movie, and this is version 103, and the last one was 300, so there is a lot of designs for these characters, um, and I really like H. H is a really good look for Gwen. It's like she took Miles' sort of concept and just put, like, a hoodie over it. Um, I don't like D there, uh, with the red sort of face thing. I think that's really off-putting. And there is a thing with red eyes with C there. Everyone has a red-eyed variant, and I don't know why they all went with red lenses. Um, 
I don't like the idea of the red lenses. It's very like jarring and like off putting. But they even went as far to make some three D models for these characters as well. Um, but Gwen's suit sort of stayed the same throughout from the first movie. She just got some like gloves. Miles' suit did have the biggest change, and here is why. There were so many different designs and so many different ideas going with like where to put the webbing, what sort of symbol the suit should be, the red lines going through it. And they did decide to go with the red stripes from down the side with bleeding from the armpits. And I thought that they made such a funny joke out of that and it was such a good sort of costume design. A lot of these here do look the same with very minor differences. So you can see how much effort and sort of thought went into making the suit. Uh, the Messi here uh, did does look like um, the superior Spider-Man suit. So I'm glad that they didn't go with that one. Uh, they didn't even put it onto a couple of 3D models. Here, in these pictures, his arms look really long and he does look like the beast type from Attack on Titan. Um, and yes, I am aware I did say number C instead of letter C. Uh, but some of these suits do look pretty sick. Um, but I'm, I, I like the one they chose. I'm happy with the one they chose. None of these really stood out as above the one that they chose. It's just a lot of different ideas flowing around. I do like the idea of a light blue uh, spider logo. I think that's really cool and it would have made the suit a little better, but it would have made it look a little techy as well. Um, the Vulture has a lot of character designs and a lot of thought put into him. And he was only in it for the first five minutes of the film, but he does look really creepy in some of this concept art. He looks really like... He looks like he's got long limbs. He looks like he's replaced parts of his body parts with sort of uh, crow features, like vulture features and like tech. His wings are massive and they have like knives at the end. And one of these sort of concept arts, he has like a gas mask and he's got tubes coming out of his mouth and out of his eyes. And it just looks all gross and creepy. And I would have liked to see a little bit further development in some of these concept arts, just see where they're going with the idea because some of them are absolutely freaky. Uh, but they did dial it down for the film, and I'm quite glad they dialed it down with the film, because he does look so ugly in some of these designs. Not saying that the art is bad, I'm just saying that the character does look ugly, and that's... If that's what they were going for, they were doing so well. Just look at that bottom right there. He looks so ugly, and he's, he just looks scary with a gas mask on. But they did take some inspiration from the comic books, like the original comic book design for Vulture, which is quite cool. Um, and a lot of artists have sort of inspiration things thrown up to the side as they're drawing. Uh, it's just nice to see which inspiration they had for some of these designs. We've covered the main characters now, and now we're heading into just random spiders. We have uh, the Mangaverse Spider-Man here, which is a pretty cool Spider-Man in my opinion. It's like Spider-Man is like an anime, is like a manga. I do believe he got like a little sort of spin-off show. Um, and he does have these big bandages around his hands. He is wearing like a gi. And um, I like how they're drawing 3D on top of the 2D design. It just looks really cool, just the way that they've designed it here. Um, he doesn't have webbing um, in the sort of base design here, so they've drawn some on just to see what it looked like. Penny Parker does have a lot of different designs here, but they did stick with the same one from Spider-Verse. They just made her look a little older, so they did go with D here. Um, but the suit got the biggest upgrade, the, like the big mech or the spider uh, got destroyed in the first one, so they had to redesign it for the second one. It does look more accurate to the comics, and it does look badass. It looks like a Power Ranger, it looks like a big mecha suit, um, and it does have four abs, and she is going to be main character in the next one, so I can't, see, can't wait to see this thing in action. I do like the design where it's sort of like being held together by magnets, but it's not actually touching. Uh, that design just looked really cool to me, and I wish they went with that one, but I'm also glad that they didn't because the, the one that they used is still really good. Spider-Cat. He was only in it for a couple of seconds, and they had so many different character designs. E would be the perfect design for me, but it does look a lot like Spider-Ham, so I do understand why they went with, like, a F. But E looks really cool, and I do wish they went with E. I think E is a little better than the one that they chose, because this one just looks like a cat. Everyone's asking for what his um, canon event was, but you know, my favorite was definitely E. E looks the best. Spider Canada, I believe she had a blue costume in the movie. Um, there was like a, she had a hockey stick, and I do believe it was a blue hoodie, not a, a red one in the movie. I could have been wrong, I could have missed seen, uh, but she was in the movie for a couple of seconds, and I like the sort of uh, fluffy hood. It gives like Kenny vibes from South Park, and um, 
I like the design of the back. I like the Canada maple leaf. Um, I don't know if I like the eyes where they try and make the maple leaf look like the eyes. Um, but D. D has my favorite eyes. Um, I like D the most. But moving on to Web Slinger, which is the cowboy. He had the most sort of character designs for a, like a character which is only shown for a couple of seconds. The character designs for him was inspired by... Um, I forgot his name, the Mandalorian, Joel from Last of Us, um, Pedro Pascal. A lot of his design is based off Pedro Pascal. Um, and I think they did a good job. You can definitely tell from the hair and the sort of like poses he does that some of them are taken from Pedro Pascal's work. Um, he does have a gun, he has webs on his boots. He does have different poncho designs and different shirt designs. Honestly, I'm not too sure how like I would... You know, which one I like best out of this. Um, I just don't understand why the horse needs a mask as well. Um, then we have a lot of effort going into the shatchel of this horse as well. Like, look at these minor details getting so much sort of thought. and Like, look, we have some pictures of real saddles and real horses here. Just to make this saddle look, like, as good and as realistic as possible. And they didn't need to go through all this effort. Like, it's very minor details, which people gloss over. Uh, th but they, they're putting in the work, they're putting in the effort, and you can understand, like, how much work and heart went into these characters. Moving on to Spider UK. UK, I live there. Yes, I do. Uh, I do like the lion. Lion instead of the spider symbol. It just looks so good, but it doesn't make sense. But, like, usually on, like, British things, there is, like, a lion there. Um... I don't know why there's a lion, but there is. We have no lions in the UK, so why do we have it? I don't know. The Union Jack makes an incorporation here as well. Um, honestly, it's a really cool character design. And with these character designs, they do put a lot of thought into color and a lot of thought into some of the poses that the character will be and how they will, so how like their clothing fits the sort of poses they make. Moving on to Sun Spider, a lot of thought went into this character as well. Um, a lot of notes were on this character because of the wheelchair and like how the wheelchair would look and how it would all fit together and how it would turn into the sort of spider crawling mech that it does. Because first of all, it's a wheelchair that it grows like six legs and becomes a wheel. No, it's not a wheel. It's like a spider chair. Um, and it just looks so cool. A lot of thought went into it. and You can tell like all the little details, the step-by-step -step process of how it turns from wheelchair to spider with different colors showing where the legs come out and where the legs are. It's just so much thought here. Uh, I do like the fact that she has a jacket. And I do like her baseball hat uh, with the spider logo on it. Um, definitely custom made. There is magnets on her crutches as well. So then they stick to her arms. So even if she's not holding them, she can still like grab them. And it does the crutches shoot the webs. It is such a like creative Spider-Man design and a creative Spider person. Uh, moving on to Spider Bite, which is the techie one, uh, the Avatar Spider Woman as well. This design didn't make it into the, to the movie, but it is the design the Funko Pop is based off, um, and that's why the Funko Pop looks so different from the one in the movie. Uh, I do like the one where she is just, like, code and, like, circuitry and not actually a person. It's just, like, a bunch of circuitry to make, like, the shape of D. Like, right there, that one where it's just, like, circuitry and, like, floating body bits. That one looks the best to me, and I kind of wish they went with that one. I also like how the hair is sort of glitchy and sort of pixelated. We also have the music people, uh, Spider-Verse people in the movie, and uh, this one... Got the biggest thing. Uh, I do believe it's Metro who has his own. Um, but they even put some thought into Rhino. A lot of like stuff went into Rhino here. Uh, and Rhino wasn't even in it for that long. I believe he w he was in one of the cells in the background. So them to put all this detail into Rhino, I do believe that we was supposed to get like a Rhino scene. Or maybe like a Rhino uh, bad guy chase or a Rhino attack or something to do with Rhino that was cut. Because there is so much... Art on Rhino here, the way he runs, the way he charges, um, his mask that can come down. I know Rhino's just a guy in a big Rhino suit and the suit is stuck to him, but I like how the sort of top part of the mask can come down to cover his eyes so that the eyes match where the Rhino's eyes would be. It just looks so cool, the glowing white eyes. Uh, just another generic background character. I do believe this is like the ultimate Spider Man. 
Um, just a quick concept out of here. But then we have the bombastic uh, Bagman, who has four different designs. And I do believe they went with number three, but I do believe it should have been number one because he does have this design because of um, the Fantastic Four. Uh, but they did give him just like a Spider-Man suit with a paper bag on his head. We also have some different designs for Miles 42. And I do like Miles 42's design. I thought it was like the cleanest, sort of sickest design for like a Prowler Miles. And I thought it represented Miles really well. Uh, if he was to be the Prowler... I don't like how this, his goggles look really big on this second one here. Um, I think the goggles... I'm glad that they made them, like, techy and sort of vanish. Because some of these goggles look massive. I like how he looks like a... Like a drifter at the bottom there. Uh, with, like, the hoods and the sort of black. And he's just, like, sort of shadowed out. I think that design choice was really cool. But that's all the concept art I have for this artist. I will be back again with another artist concept art. If you enjoyed this video... Um, I'll be back again, but other than that, I hope you enjoyed. See you all next one. Have a nice day, and goodbye. Stay home and stay safe. I do prefer the current version of Miles 42.